What's up everybody and welcome to your next SML 2.0 tutorial and this tutorial we're going to be learning about networking so we're just going to be uh, starting off in this tutorial and we're going to be learning um, uh, about other networking properties in later tutorials so in this tutorial we're going to be learning about uh, using TCP sockets and um, this is the most basic uh, type of connection and uh, we're going to be sending data uh, through two different um, two different running programs, right? And you can test this on other computers just to make sure uh, if it works, but um, it should work. Now, what we want to do is go to our linker settings, uh, and uh, we're going to want to link against uh, the SML network library. Uh, so make sure you uh, link against that, and make sure we include the network.hpp. So to start off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called a TCP socket. And uh, we're just gonna call this socket. Now a socket is uh, something that we can use to send and receive data. Uh, that's just the, um, the simple way to explain it. Uh, if you want a more advanced way uh, or advanced term, advanced terminology, then you can always search it on Google. So what we're gonna do, uh, I have the string class included, or actually, we'll just use a char and we'll call this connection type and we'll make another uh, char call mode so what we're gonna do at the beginning of our program we're gonna ask the uh, user for the connection type um, let's say enter s for server and we'll say enter c for client now we're just in this program we're just gonna assume they enter correct value. If you wanna accommodate for error checking, then that is up to you. Oh, did I say oh this should be C out? And we gotta change these operator symbols. Um and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say C N and we're gonna get our connection type. Okay? And so what we're going to do is make an if statement and we're going to say if connection type is equal to S, then uh, we do something else. If connection type equal to C, then we do something else. So S means that it is uh, on the server uh, and C means that it is, uh, C means that it is a client. So if it's on the server, then what we're going to do is we're going to make a TCP listener. And what a listener does is that it listens to a specific port, right? So we specify a port where we want to actually check for uh, what we're connecting to, and then we try to establish a connection. Now, uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to be learning about UDP sockets, but the main difference between TCP and UDB is that... Uh, UDP is that TCP, you need to establish a connection before you can really do something or whatever uh with the udp uh you don't a connection is not guaranteed you don't need a connection in order for it to work okay but that means that it could accommodate for some data being lost and some stuff like that but i'll get into all that stuff later but what we're gonna do we created something called listener and uh what we have to do is we have to listen for a port and it says unsigned short port. Now I believe anything under 1024 is like a private port or something and anything above it is a public. I'm not sure, I don't really remember, uh, but I would set a value above uh, um, 1024. Well, I don't think it really matters which value you put to be honest, but I, I do a value over 1024. So we're listening for port, uh, 2000 and what we're gonna say is listener dot accept and we're gonna pass in our socket so if it finds what this is gonna do it's gonna continue listening to port 2000 and if it does find something uh, if it does find a connection on port 2000 then we're gonna accept um, we're gonna accept or uh, whatever is coming in or that connection and uh, we're gonna store that connection in our TCP so socket so that we can send data and we can um, receive data. So in here, if it is a client, then what we have to do is call socket.connect. And uh, we have to connect uh, to an IP address and a port. So one thing that we have to do right now is we have to create our IP address um, 
use the IP address um, uh, class and we'll just call this IP and we're gonna say SF IP address and we can get a local address we can get a public address we can get a um, we can uh, we can get it based on just typing in the port name we can type in the computer name uh, there's many different things the way we can do it but we're just gonna um, say get local address okay so we're just gonna get the local address which is the address on our local machine uh, the public address is getting the address um, from the network if you go to my what's my IP org I think uh, it, that's the public address that it will give you. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna establish our IP, right? And if you're running this on different computers or, or that or something that has a different a different local address or a different public address, then you're gonna have to go about it differently. But since I'm running this on the same computer, uh, then the local and public all the addresses are gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna put the IP in there. And we're gonna try to connect to port 2000 and this checks this says a timeout value so we can set a time value for how long we should wait until it times out uh, but it's up to you if you guys want to do that uh, so this is gonna connect uh, to our socket so if it connects um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just send a message and we're gonna say uh, socket dot send and we're gonna learn about packets later, but what we're gonna what we want to do is just send some data, some text or something. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put um, we're just gonna create a string and call it text and say uh, uh, or you know what? Just to make this easier, we we'll just put this up here and we'll say connected two and right here uh we'll say text plus equals to server and down here we'll say text plus equals client okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna send this uh we're gonna send this to uh the client right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say text dot c underscore string so we're setting that to a, a constant um, char string so a c style string and uh, we need to pass off the size of it so we're going to say just a length plus one uh, just to be on the safe side now for right here we're going to do the same thing so we're going to say socket dot send and we'll say text dot c string and uh since this is doing the same thing uh we can just put it underneath these if statements doesn't really matter and we'll just say text dot length length plus one and you know what instead of uh, since these are gonna end up doing the exact same thing I'll just place it under here so this is gonna send it uh, so if you're the server this is gonna send it to the client if you're the client this is gonna send it to the server uh, so now we have to be able to receive uh, what the other person sent us. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say um, we're gonna say socket dot receive. So socket dot receive it, it takes in um, some um, some data and so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do at the top right here is we're just gonna make a char and we're just gonna call this buffer and we're just gonna make it two thousand just to be on the safe side. Uh, more than it needs to be um, and we're just gonna make a uh, STD size underscore T and we'll just call it received and what this does is that um, the based on the amount of uh, bytes that we actually receive this will return the amount of bytes that we actually um, that we actually receive so now we're gonna say socket I receive we're gonna store it in the buffer uh, we need the size of the buffer and we're just gonna pass in received in there and when we receive that message then we're just gonna display that message to the screen and we're just gonna say buffer and I'm just gonna end the line and we'll add in return zero and I'm just gonna add in system pause in there just so it doesn't open and close too quickly uh, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna run this program right now so uh, since I can't run two instances of the program in my IDE I've opened the project folder 
right where it's at. So what you want to do is build it. And uh, once you're done, once this build succeeded, then you can, it should refresh on its own, but if it doesn't, you can click the refresh on there. And we're going to run it through here, and we're going to run it on here as well. So now I'm just going to say uh, S for the server. And right here, I'm going to say C for the client. So right now it says connected to the client. So the client sent this message to the server and it says connected to client. And the server sent this message to the cl uh, to the client and it says connected to the server. So that's how you can send messages uh, to whoever you're connected to on a TCP based server. Now I know this is kind of like a vague um, instructional video. So what I'm going to do in the next tutorial is that we're going to actually set up a messaging system where the client can actually, uh, I'm just going to improve upon this code, just make it a bit better and you'll have more fun with it. So look, I hope you look forward to the next tutorial. Thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe and bye.